Uh, the Last of Us, Last of Us uh, series, which is on HBO, uh, starring Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey. Pedro, uh, Pedro Pascal, who people know from Game of Thrones, he was also in The Mandalorian. Um, he is collecting them nerd checks. I tell you. And also, and also, you may know him by his most prestigious title as Daddy. <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot of women do thirst after him and everything like that online. Uh, very... I thirst after him. <laughs> um. And when you see him in the show, I, I think he very much does look a lot like Joel. I think he's got the kind of Joel look to him. You actually mm. see him in the show moving around. Um, and you also have Belly Ramsey, who was also from Game of Thrones. She played Leanna Mormont. Uh, Little Bear uh, was her name in Game of Thrones. Uh, here she is, is playing Ellie. Um, Last of Us, it, this is a show that's based off the popular video game series uh, by the same name. Uh, Neil Drunkman, who was the creator of the video game series, uh, also has a very prominent role here in the show. Um, so maybe that attributes to yeah. the, the quality yeah, of the... Yeah, prominent role, yeah, prominent role in the show and as well as, na as in Naughty Dog. And notice which Naughty Dog game turned show turned film that he was very keen to keep his name off of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, this, uh, this was a show now. I've played some of the games. Nick is a big fan of the games, uh, so he can speak more to, you know, how well, you know, I mean, this series kind of adapts uh, some of the elements of the game. He can probably get more into that. Um, Hunter has never played, uh, you've never played the games, Hunter, right? So, I, yeah, I only got about five hours into, like, the first game. Okay. Oh shit. Yeah, uh, nothing. So you're getting a different, all kind of different uh, perspectives here from everybody. Um, you know what I mean from their uh, experience with the game. Um, and this was so they did the a series premiere this past Sunday that came out. Um, and apparently people are really digging it. Uh, people are really loving it. Uh, it seems to be really popular. And people have already called it, this is the best video game adaptation ever and everything like that. Um, are we going to say the same thing? Well, we're going to let you know right now. Um, I'm gonna I, mean, I, don't, I, mean, I, I mean, I don't want to be hyperbolic, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, so I'm going to let Nick go ahead and go first. Nick, what were some of your thoughts on The Last of Us? So the biggest problem with adapting a property like The Last of Us is that game, like most Naughty Dog properties, those are already inherently very cinematic. A lot of them are very story-driven games. So how do you adapt a story like The Last of Us and take it into a medium like television? The answer, you get the showrunner and creator of one of the best miniseries in the last 20 years with Craig Mazin, who did Chernobyl. And you let him and Neil Druckmann, who was the original writer for the game, the creative director at Naughty Dog at the time, and you have them in the room together and you figure out how do we take how do we take the story and do things that we could not do in the confines of a video game? Because a lot of the elements I think that are changed, especially in this first episode, are things that you could not have done in the video game without completely ruining the pacing. Like, we get a completely different opening from the game because we open in the 60s, and that is getting, I was getting a lot of Mason's vibes from Chernobyl with this because you open up on this talk show where they're talking about what is going to be the thing that kills humanity. And this one scientist brings up mush, brings up fungi, which is the very basis of this cordyceps infection that we get in The Last of Us. And that was like the most terrifying five minutes of television yes. that I've seen in my entire life. And especially because you get so many real world par parallels because yeah, per the CDC fungal infections literally don't have vaccines. They don't have cures for them. It's like they exist, but not in humans, but yeah, that's because fungi didn't have a reason to evolve. It was like, Oh shit. Hmm. Nice. But yeah. even once you get even once you get past that initial shit your pants horrifying news segment, you get the opening of the show, which uh, you have Gustavo Santonea from who was the composer for both games, reprising his role as composer for the show. And that opening, beautiful, Chef's kiss, beautiful, beautiful. I was I was hyped seeing it. 
especially how it incorporates the progression of the of the cordyceps infection, which we'll see much more of that as the show goes on. Because spoiler, we only really get the runners in this first episode. We don't see clickers. We don't see like the bloaters or anything like that. Hmm. But moving on, the biggest change that I think uh, that the show does, at least with this first episode, is we get much more of Joel's daughter, Sarah. Because initially she is our protagonist. We're seeing most of this episode through her eyes during the initial day of the outbreak. We get much more of her relationship with Pedro Pascal's Joel as her father, which I was iffy on the casting. I think Pedro Pascal is a great enough actor that he could basically do anything. And he is picture perfect as Joel. And the casting of his brother Tommy, who is played by Gabriel Luna, who was in S.H.I.E.L.D. as Ghost Rider, who was in uh, Terminator Dark Fate, as I think one of the only good parts about that movie. His is probably my favorite performance in this episode, but it is the one that is the most closely resembling an impression because he gets the mannerisms, the accent, the inflections of Tommy from the games down to a T. And it's great to see, but it's the one that feels like an impression. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Okay. Um, Hunter, what were some of your thoughts? Uh, yeah, this is... When I think about like a perfect pilot, I think of... Mm -hmm. Oh, God. I think of like Abbott Elementary has a perfect mm -hmm. pilot. Um, I think Falcon Winter uh, Soldier is a mm. perfect pilot. Um, the Boys... Like uh, I, I always get to the boys, the, the boys, obviously. <laughs> Goddamn um, right, you better. Um, I would say even something like, I would even say something like Harley Quinn. I think it's like, mm -hmm. like for what it's supposed to set up, you go, okay, I know exactly what I'm getting into. This, the parallels to the pandemic that this draws mm -hmm. are genuinely terrifying. And, and look, I, I, I think I talked about last time I was on, you know, I, I just got over COVID about six weeks ago. And, you know, I'm still feeling some effects of it. I'm still, like, flimmy as fuck. And it's like, uh, this is a pain. But the way that John Hanna, as that scientist, is describing this potential outbreak, it's, they do such a good job of drawing parallels that you're kind of like, mm -hmm. like, uh, fuck, okay. Like, it's really... <laughs> and, and, and the biggest thing that that opening does is it introduces this entire story and this entire infection to a new audience. Because let's be honest, a majority of the people watching this have not played the games. They've never even yes. looked at a PlayStation 3 where the game debuted on. They haven't even like been able to see a PS5. And that'll probably apply to most of the people watching the show today. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where um, the way that's introduced, they do a really great job of doing it. The line that kind of killed me that he drops is billions of puppets with poison minds like that line i was like i was like oh i don't like that at all in the way that <laughs> and i say that and i say this as somebody that has played both games that knows that may or may not know most of the story beats that are going to happen during the show and i was gripping my seat like the show does a great job of setting up the stakes from very early on and i i, I think something that automatically gives me a oh i'm excited for this over something like the walking dead is that we know where this is ending up like this won't drag on for you know five seasons too long like we'll at most get two seasons and we'll be done and there there's a comfort in knowing that there is an end game to this um pedro pascal the the, the motherfucker can do whatever he wants like the, the the man is the man is brilliant um and there is a scene later on in this uh in the pilot where you can feel the darkness of joel bubbling up um he he, mm -hmm. he was he did go through um he was a member of the military so you know that he's got training and everything and there's this one scene with the soldier that i just went Oh, that, that parallel Which, yeah that's the, yeah and that just speaks to what you can do on a television show what you can do in a video game because 
even though that play that scene plays out essentially more or less the same way you get so much more just by being able to explicitly spell out that yes joel has joel clearly has ptsd which we imply a within the first game and we are explicitly shown through how he has dealt with or not dealt with uh, Sarah's death, Sarah, uh, with uh, his previous losses in his life. And the way he lays into that dude, I feel yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's terrifying, honestly, because one of the things that this show does a great job of very, very early on is asking you where you're where your humanity would stop. Like, cause yeah, because, this... yeah, and something that is so good about, is, that makes The Last of Us as compelling as it is, is that Joel is not an angel. Joel 100% leaves people to die in the initial outbreak. He's like, fuck him. Somebody else will come along. Mm. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, uh, like Chill said, so you see an army sticker at the back of uh, Joel's car at the beginning of the series, uh, in, the, in the episode, mm -hmm. I mean, you see that. Uh, Javon Good also mentioned uh, that the actor Gabriel Luna, he's used the same accent, the Tommy accent in Terminator, because uh, if people remember, Gabriel Luna was the Terminator in uh, Terminator, what was that movie called? Dark Fate. Dark uh, Fate, yeah. Um, he was a Terminator yeah, in that one. L as El, T El Terminato. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he was... <laughs> Uh, so, so the thing about this, this Thank series, you, here all week. That's good. <laughs> um, so the thing about the series is, you know, it, you know, coming into it, you know, people who are big fans of the game, I was like, what is it going to do for them? Because they've already, you know, had this completely immersive experience because that's what video games, they do so much because you're completely immersed in experience and you're playing out these actions. Uh, what is the show going to really improve upon? Uh, but I, you know, saw a lot of people uh, say like that beginning of where you see the beginning of the game, um, where the first initial the outbreak happens, that it still got them. You know what I mean? Even though they knew it was coming, that moment still was very emotional for them. Um, and I thought that was that's pretty powerful. Um, yeah, and, and even down to like the slight changes of the of where the show and the game meet, the very slight differences in how they choose to show that because. At a certain point in the show, the audio cuts out and you're just left with Pedro Pascal's performance. And it is just as powerful as the opening of the game. Yeah. And Pedro is still a fantastic actor, um, doing a lot of great work. Uh, and I think he's great here. Uh, and it's interesting, and also to see some of the other kind of supporting players here, um, I'm going to bring them up. Uh, you have Anna Torv, uh, I believe is her name. Uh she was in Fringe, um, which I loved her on that show. I love Fringe as a oh, show. So um, really, really great show. <laughs> yep, I loved her on that show and fell in love. Um, and she's playing the recently character. In, yeah, and most recently in Mindhunter, the oh. tragically canceled Netflix show. Yeah. Oh, yeah, let's not talk about it. <laughs> um and she's Anna Torv, she's playing Tess um in the show. Um and she's the one that's with Joel who's going to help uh smuggle uh Ellie. Um and I th yeah, I think she's she's really great. And and from what I've played of the game, I think she's a pretty good choice to play Tess. What were you thinking about uh like some of the other actors outside of Joel and Ellie and how well um they kind of represented the characters from the game? What do you think about that? Yeah, Joel yeah, because I can't speak to enough about how great the cast But all of the casting of all of the supporting characters so far have been pitch perfect, spot on, beautiful. Anna Torv, I think she does a lot to... She gives a lot more to Tess than I think is in the confines of the game. Because we don't spend much time with Tess outside of her interaction with Joel in the game. But through that, through their dialogue, we get the hint that there was a past relationship between the two of them and here we're explicitly shown that and in most cases i would say that is like okay that's kind of lazy but their chemistry when they're both up and about it does enough to sell me that yes these are two people that have stuck by each other and have survived together as long as they have and have gone through a lot of shady shit together which yeah. i think is kind of the nature of them there is yeah. one decision that I think that I wish we would have gotten because the opening action sequence is against the character Robert, who um, 
is kind of killed off screen in the show, which I do wish we got that because that illustrates how kind of ruthless both Joel and Tess are at the start of this and why somebody like Marlene would trust Ellie with them. Hmm. Nice. Um, yeah, and, and the, you know, it really drops you when you see the rest of the episode and, and see this world after the outbreak and what it's kind of become and seeing everything like that. Um, it, it does look, you know, what I mean, like this kind of lived in kind of world. Uh, and it does kind of bring you into the experience, which I think is good. Um, the budget on this show, I imagine, is pretty, probably pretty high. I imagine the production budget on this show is. <laughs> oh, they oh, swapped some money behind they it. Swapped, they swapped out a car crash of how how Joel gets separated from Tommy in the game to a full-on plane coming down like the apocalypse is coming. They got they got money. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, they, they dropped some money on this. Yeah, so um so it does it does really kind of look like it there that they yeah, did pretty well with that. Um yeah, and you know I like that, you know, the, the look of the people there, they looked haggard, they looked tired. It's not like Hollywood haggard or Hollywood tired where, you know what I mean? People are supposed, supposed to be, uh, yeah. you know. People look uh, like shit. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's not like when you see something like sometimes. Yeah, Anna, you, yeah, uh, yeah Anna Torv is like one of the most beautiful women in the world. She looks covered in grime. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, Hunter, you bring up the Walking Dead. Uh, Mention that it's like you know, you know, you're not gonna see anybody walking around with like booty shorts, nothing like that. You ain't gonna see something like that. You know what I mean? Tank top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You ain't gonna see nobody in no coochie cutters. You know what I mean? Ain't, ain't nothing yeah, like that. But, okay. but, but but a lot of these apocalyptic movies or what have you have like where they still have like eyeshadow or you, you know or like yeah, <laughs> oh like make them. There's nah, the four up in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, even even Merle Dandridge, who is uh, playing the character Marlene, who's reprising her from the game, which that is really cool to see. Even she was kind of looking very haggard. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and so many, we see so many, like, apocalypse-type stories out now. You know, not even mentioned The Walking Dead. I know Why the Last Man, which was a comic book, then it got adapted into a show that only lasted, like, a season, I think. Um, there was that. Yeah, that, was, that was a one season show, anyway. So yeah. Um. So that 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 was that. Um. There was also that show. I know it was more of like a comedy show, but it was a show like Will Forte. Um. Oh, that was Last Man on Earth. Yeah. That yeah. Was a great show. Yeah. Um. There was that. So I, you know, I was curious to see if people would be kind of apocalypse out. You know what I mean? If if that would kind of be a thing. If we you know people would get tired of seeing that. Um. As an environment, but it. Seems like, I mean, seems like not. I mean, seems like people are really loving it. Um, I, I very much like this show, like the premiere of it. Um, you know, I don't know if it's going to be the best video game adaptation ever. I mean, it's only the premiere episode, but I think it's a strong premiere episode, and that's what you want, uh, especially to interest people when there's already so much kind of going against it already. The expectations are already so high coming off an incredibly popular video game, a, a critically acclaimed video game, too, considered one of the, one of the best video games of all time. Coming. Yeah, the expectations are high, not just coming off of one of the most critically acclaimed games in the last 20 years. It's coming off the acclaim of a game that, in many ways, it changed the way stories are told in video games. Because after The Last of Us, you got a lot more single-player story-driven games. Like, without The Last of Us, we wouldn't get stuff like the way Grand Theft Auto 4 does stories. We wouldn't have gotten stuff like how Jedi Fallen Order. We wouldn't have gotten the way God of, the way God of War got rebooted. We wouldn't have gotten uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. Um, so I think that, yeah, I, I think, you know, they had a lot going against it. And, it, you know, interesting to see how, you know, how well that this turns out when it all comes to an end um in this uh with this season and to see like how well they do with the dynamic with joel and ellie going forward um and you know are they because sometimes it could be a difficult balance you know what i mean like okay you know the the we've seen this plenty of time and time again the grizzled you know older guy with the younger girl and you know what i mean kind of the the lone shit, wolf one with, shit one with pedro Pascal. Yeah, you know what I mean, the the Mandalorian. Uh, so we've kind of seen. So you know, you know how well is that kind of relationship going to turn out? If they're going to do a good job at kind of play, playing that and not make Ellie kind of an annoying kid character, which I don't think they are. It seems like they're doing a pretty good stuff with her um, in this from the yeah, series. Yeah, as of right now, the performance of Bella Ramsey as Ellie, it's, it's perfect. It's, per it's perfect because yeah, it Ellie, perfect. when you first meet Ellie. 
Ellie is a little fucking shithead. Mm -hmm. uh, chill ass question is Ellie a potty mouth in the game as well? Um, yeah. Mm, yeah, okay. she definitely. Just a little bit I've played, she's definitely potty mouth in the game. Uh, yeah, she um, is potty mouth as hell. She is very headstrong and a little fucking asshole. Mm. There's a great scene of her counting in the show, and I laughed so hard at the punchline on that. <laughs> I was like, I was like, <laughs> all right, I was like, I like it's you. Like, <laughs> At that at that moment, I said, "Okay, Bella Ramsey's got this." Oh. Yeah, but uh. the uh, the initial uh, kind of escape from out of town scene. <laughs> oh, no, the the no, the no, the no, the initial intro of Joel and. <laughs> wait, wait, Nick, you cut out there. Won't yeah. You? No, just the initial like meeting of Joel and Ellie because. <laughs> Ellie tries to stab Joel. He just yeah, eats her across that, the room. That was that was great. <laughs> but the whole but the whole actual um, escape. Uh, yeah, um, the, es scene the escape from Boston. The escape Ooh! from Boston. It's so well done. It's incredibly yeah. tense. You have these like looming searchlights, and when they get caught, because of course they are, it is one of the most tense scenes. And I knew exactly how it was gonna play. And it still got me. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's incredibly well shot, and the and the um, the score that was like the biggest compliment I can I think I'm gonna have to pay is the score here when things are slowing down, when things are getting darker. Um, the initial escape, as I mentioned, um, there's a point where Sarah goes next door to her neighbors, and a, a, a very good lesson here, kids. Um, animals know first. So if there's an animal <laughs> that's going like, I don't want to go back that's, there. Nope. You listen. If, you listen to the, the animal because if the dog is noping out of there, you should too. Yeah, because yeah, I'll be real. Both my both of our cats would be like, nah, fam. They would be meowing. I'd be like, all right, cool. We're not going next door. Like, I don't know why you don't want to go there, but I get it. But um, yeah, and yeah, and the score again. It's uh, Gustavo Santo. Santoya, Santoya, yeah. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. He's uh, he was the composer for both video games. Yeah, the intro of this show is also really good too. I like the intro they do. I too. love the intro. The intro is really yeah, good. The, 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 yeah, but I don't know. This this feels like people because if you've seen Chernobyl, Chernobyl is a dark ass fucking show, but it's one of the best <laughs> shot HBO shows. It's in the top five, if not the top three. Like it, like mm. Chernobyl's an incredibly well shot HBO show, and there's so many shots in this. Whether it's this, uh, as Nick mentioned, the aforementioned uh, airplane crash, or whether it's this incredible shot of uh, Joel and Ellie um, going through this gate to go ahead and escape as rain is falling down. Like there are so many shots in this tra uh, in this pilot. That Even. I even down to the money shot, which we get the lightning striking and seeing the ruins of Boston, yes. which is setting up one of the one of the initial levels of the first game. Yeah, yeah. which I mean, let's be real; it doesn't look too different from Boston in normal <laughs> state. But, you know? <laughs> but hey, they're not filming in Detroit. <laughs> uh, fuck Boston! Here, the word is all of you. <laughs> Uh, Javon Good, Javon Good is with us. I don't know if he's still setting up there, if he's got his mic and everything like that. Yeah, right? hey! Okay. Um, so I'm gonna come back to Javon Good in a second, but I'm gonna let Nick and uh, Hunter give their wrap ups and then um, there and uh, I don't know if you want to rate it, but I guess just give overall rating just for the premiere episode. I guess uh, that'd be fine. Uh, Nick. So, I'm a huge fan of the of the video game. I played it multiple times across all of its versions. I played the remaster on the PS4 when uh, Part 2 was coming out, and that was one of the... Yeah, I was one of the shills that bought the remake at full price when, when it came on the PS5. Of course you were. Every... <laughs> hey, fuck you. And, <laughs> and You're every, part of the problem. <laughs> and, every, every, and every time I play the game, I get... I know it is coming, and it's like when I see a movie, I know it's going to make me I say, not this time. I'm not going to break down this time. I am not going to break down this time. I'm not going to break down this time. 
<laughs> and it gets me every time. And I was kind of that way watching the watching the initial episode, especially where we're when we get introduced to the to the uh, conflict of the show with the whole escort mission of Joel and Ellie and that dynamic. I knew that the opening of this show was going to delve into those same parts and it still got me. And it wasn't just that it's a very powerful performance, both by Pedro Pascal and Nico Parker, who plays Sarah. It's all of the little changes that uh, Craig Mazin and Le Neil Druckmann did with the opening of The Last of Us that added so much more to the world and to uh, and to the characters that ended up making it work so well. It's like it's one thing to make a great pilot. It's another to have a pilot of an adaptation where I know everything that you are going to do and you still manage to hit me emotionally. And this is probably one of my favorite pilots I've seen in a very long time. Probably my favorite pilot since the boys. Hmm. Nice. Uh, what rating? This is fucking cinema. I'll say it. God damn it. Mm. I've watched it mm. twice since I watched it once last night with my dad and even he, Shit, is that the only episode out now? Mm. And my dad never gets like that. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, Hunter, and I rewatched it, and I cut it on early this morning while I was drinking to like get my notes together for the show. And you know, while I was just waiting around for Josh to finally get his shit together and uh, open up the Discord, I cut it on again. Mm. Nice, uh, Hunter. Yeah, this this goes up there with my favorite pilots, uh, right up there with like something. I mean, to go very old school, something like The Tick or uh, <laughs> X Men the animated series, just something more recent, like uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier and the Boys. Um, and and I use I use Falcon and the Winter Soldier specifically because the ending of that episode is such a gut punch in the way it's like of course the government would give the shield to a racist white guy why am i even surprised thanks america and where this episode <laughs> and where this episode ends with the song that plays it's such a oh balls like it's such a it's such a feeling of dread but you know that bad things are ahead and yet you're intrigued on what the show is going to give you moving forward um I'm so excited. Like I don't watch stuff week to week, because I like to I like to binge it all at once. But I'll be real. Considering how much the first episode fucked with me, I don't know if I want to watch seven episodes. Do it. 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 <laughs> so maybe I'll wait for like two weeks and do it that way. I don't know. <laughs> but but this was this was just a joy. Just from the way it's shot to the performances to um, the trailer of what's coming in the weeks ahead. I'm just excited to see where this is going. And once the show is over, I look forward to playing the game at some point and hopefully beating it. So yes, yeah, this, this is a, this is cinema. I just I adore this pilot. You know, no, no, I I gotta retract my my rating to uh, waste a fucking film because. This clearly does not understand the understand the game. I missed the part where I died seven where Joel <laughs> dies seventeen times at the first clicker he meets. It's like what the fuck? Greg Mason. Thought you knew what you were doing. <laughs> um all right, two this is cinemas. Uh John Kidd, you wanna go ahead? Give your thoughts on it? Oh yeah, it was great. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. What no, you, you guys to elaborate. Much. You Would guys you pretty much said everything. Um, yeah, I thought it was an amazing pilot. Probably the best one I've seen since probably the Walking Dead pilot. I know Nick said the boys, or one of y'all said the boys, I can't remember. Um, yeah, the Walking Dead is probably the best pilot I've seen before this. I love the intro. I started off, uh, gave us more time to spend with the characters before shit goes down. We got to learn uh, about Sarah before her unfortunate death and everything. Because yeah. in the game, in the game, it's very quickly, y'all. Like you mm. get to meet her. Like it starts off on the couch where she's giving her dad the present, which is like what, like ten minutes into the show. Or yeah, something like which that. is yeah, which is such a cute scene between the two of them, and it just builds up so much of the relationship between uh, Sarah and her dad. Mm. Oh yeah, and then we got to see exactly how Joel does work in this game <laughs> and everything. I mean, in the show, 
over the game. The game, we pretty much see him going right after Robert. And y'all saw how he was in the TV show. Just like a little slimy weasel and shit like that. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah overall, the show's doing great. I can't wait to see in what they, episode two brings next week. But mm. um, I'll definitely give this a, what is it? What's your highest rating? Uh, this is cinema's highest rating. This is cinema. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This so... Crazy. You being a huge uh, fan of the games, you playing the games a lot. Um, how long could you see this show going on? And do you think they would continue it to where the the sequel game is, or like like what do you see them kind of doing there? And what do you think as far as this? I know you only seen the se- series premiere, but what is you know as far as like what does it do differently for you uh, than the game as far as an improvement? And what do you think the game does better um, compared to the show? Hmm. Let's see. Well, pretty much in the game, you know, you gotta do all that walking around and shit. So they pretty much cut a lot of that <laughs> shit out. Yeah, like there's certain parts in the game you're just walking for fucking ever. I like it, but I mean, because there's a lot of interesting dialogue going on. But the show's pretty much doing a lot of shit better than the game so far in the pilot. Like just fleshing mm-hmm. out characters a lot better. Um, but let's see. Uh, yeah, I could definitely see this being wrapped up in one season. Because I'm actually happy they're doing it as a TV show compared to a movie. Because y'all saw that a while back. They were trying to get it as a movie for the longest time. And that shit was not going to work. Like, yeah, you can make this, that shit. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, they were basically trying to make a movie of the last when the first game came out. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and there's a lot of story there. So, like, even if you made it, like, a two and a half hour movie, they're not going to be able to cover everything that goes on in the game. Yeah, and, but as a... <laughs> yeah, and we saw the last time Naughty Dog. Naughty Dog tried to sign off on a movie being made of one of their games. Oh, oh yeah, try to hear that shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, I can definitely. No, yeah, no, yeah. Notice which uh, which Naughty Dog had a keen to not have his name on. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, this could definitely be wrapped up in one season. There's plenty of story. Yeah, They're doing a lot of uh, like stretching at, out of the characters. At, yeah, at the most, I could see this possibly going on for three seasons. Because mm. as much as I like The Last of Us Part Two, I feel like we should have gotten a lot more of the fallout of Joel and Ellie and their relationship in that game. And I feel like you could do a great season two of just that and mm. have three be The Last of Us Part Two. Oh, okay. oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Especially yeah. because especially because I would want to see Bella Ramsey keep this role and let her age into the part of older Ellie. Yeah, because how old is Ellie in part two? Part two, I think she's like 19, maybe 21. Oh, okay. Well, Bella Ramsey's 19 right now, so. Uh, yeah. You don't look it. <laughs> yeah, that's... Old for Drake. <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, too, old for, too, old for, too old for Andrew Tate. <laughs> yeah, that, that's definitely true. Sorry, allegedly as well. No lawsuits. But. Uh, um, yeah, see how long these episodes are. They could definitely wrap this up in one season, especially explore uh, new stories along the way. Like I saw they had the um, in the trailer they show they ran into, I think, two Native American actors. I don't mm-hmm. know who they are. I've seen them before. But uh, yeah, they're experiencing the story out, so they could definitely yeah, and, wrap this show up. Yeah, and and we have Melody Linsky cast as the leader of the hunters, which was not a character that was in the game. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty cool seeing uh, the actress that plays Marlene in the video games playing her as well in the TV show. I don't know if y'all mentioned that. Yep. Mm. Yeah, yes, we right. did, and we okay. also have confirmation that both Troy Baker and Ashley John, uh, Joel and Ellie from the game, they have small roles in the show. Yeah. Oh yeah, so they showed him in the trailer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I very much like this show. I think it's a great premiere. Like Javon Good said, it's a great premiere. You know, pilot along the lines of something like The Walking Dead, which I think The Walking Dead had a great pilot. It, it started off really yeah. good. Had a really really good pilot. Um, where you see the opening of that. Um, and I think you know this is you know starts it off very well. Really, you know, engages you in the story, interests you to see it go further. And even if you're not someone who's a big fan of the game, I don't think it purely relies on that. I think like Nick was talking about, like even his dad, you know, somebody who's not familiar with the game, even was that interested to see it continue. Um, great performances, um, even not only from the lead actors, but supporting people as well. Uh, the music also is very good. Love the intro of this show, like I talked about before. Um, so I am interested to continue this um, and continue the series. I don't, I don't think we're, we're not going to do weekly reviews of it. We're going to wait till the show probably wraps up and then uh, do that. I uh, mean, January is kind of a... 
I mean, January is kind of a light month. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Bel Air coming back in the month. <laughs> you got, Gosh, you got the the <laughs> yeah, we'll say. Yeah, we'll save weekly TV breakdowns. Let's see, yeah. Bel Air. <laughs> Um, so, and, you know, it's also still, you know, so the clickers are still to come, how they do those, you know what I mean? We, you know, get to see those. Um, it's just the infected that we see kind of right now, but, um, that's interesting also. But, um, yeah, I give it a strong tune in. I liked it quite a bit. Um, yeah, we get the infected and we get the long taken over body of a body, which the effects on that look incredible. And hmm. I know that uh, HBO and uh, Mazin brought along a lot of uh, a lot of the artists from the games who designed the clickers and designed the infected from there and brought them over to the show. Mm. Nice. But yeah, one thing I will say that they definitely did better in the TV show is pretty much how the whole shit like went down when Tommy and Joel and Sarah in the c- truck and they're just trying to get away and everything like that. In the TV show, I thought they did a lot better because clearly the shot they were going for, because y'all know that the TV show is inspired by that movie Children of Men, right? Like just trying mm-hmm. to yeah. transport somebody. Yeah. yeah, so pretty much the shot that they were using, I'm a nerd out right now, pretty much the shot they were using... <laughs> In the truck right there, it's pretty much inspired, I guess, by the movie Children of Men, where it's kind of like a one shot, where it's like looking at the front of the car, then panic around. You see in the back of the car, you see that airplane just fucking coming and crashing to the fucking ground. <laughs> that shit was amazing right there. I thought that was way really better than the game. The game, you're pretty much just driving, another truck comes and knocks you over. Yeah, and it, you upside yeah, down. Yeah, truck T bones you and nails you. And and uh, Neil Druckmann looked at HBO and was like, oh, he got money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like I thought they were gonna probably blow up a gas station like they did in the intro, but you know, the game, but I, that airplane sequence was way better right there. So that's yeah. something yeah, I'm the airplane sequence that. kicked ass. Yeah, yeah. that's just badass right there. Um, yeah, so uh high praise all around uh for The Last of Us T V show. Um did they rate it? Did they give a rating? Uh yeah, you said this is cinema. Oh I am high, all right, let's keep going. Yeah. 